The Electoral College will be voting on the 14th of December, and they will be finalizing the results of the election. All that's left is for Congress to approve of it in January, but that hasn't stopped Donald Trump from still tweeting about the election and how he won and there was fraud, and now he is explicitly calling on the Supreme Court to overturn the results of the election, disenfranchising literally millions of people. He tweeted out, The Supreme Court has a chance to save our country from the greatest election abuse in the history of the United States. 78% of the people feel no, the election was rigged. Now, I don't know what poll he's referring to there. Maybe it's some Twitter poll. It doesn't matter. He lost, and he knows he lost, but he doesn't care. He thinks that he's entitled to have the Supreme Court hear his case because he appointed three Supreme Court justices. So he's thinking, look, I'm telling them that the election was rigged and that I should be the president, so they should just give me what I want. It doesn't work that way. That's not the way that our judicial system functions. It's certainly a corrupted system that needs to be reformed, but it doesn't work that way. It's not that bad, thankfully. But I mean, even though it's Donald Trump, and we're all not surprised by this, this is still really important. Like, this is the sitting president calling for authoritarianism. Like, if he got what he wanted, this would no longer be a democracy. Democracy as we know it would be dead and gone. So it doesn't work like that. But he doesn't care, because he only cares about himself. Now, if this were just Donald Trump, who is doing this. That would be one thing. But it's not just Donald Trump. And when he's out, the Republican Party isn't suddenly going to have an epiphany and think, oh, wow, I support democracy. I mean, throughout the years, they've been chipping away at our democratic institutions. They've been doing voter suppression more and more to win elections. But now they are just jumping on board with Donald Trump's attempt to steal the election. Now, I, I think that this lawsuit isn't going to go anywhere likely. But the fact that they are openly endorsing the idea that democracy should be undermined in a brazen way should scare everyone because they're not going to change their minds when Trump is out of office. You're not going to put the cat back in the bag. Once you become authoritarian, you stay that way. Now, I'm, of course, referring to the Texas lawsuit where they are trying to get the results of other states overturned because they are alleging that mail-in ballots violated the law like this is such a complex web of lies that they're trying to tell to get to the conclusion and ultimately i don't think that they're going to have standing in court to say that other states are doing something unconstitutional and they're violating their own constitutions having said that though what i care about is the fact that more than a hundred republicans have signed on to this effort an effort to overturn the results of the election that includes matt gates louis gomert and basically half of the gop House caucus. So as The Hill reports, more than 100 House Republicans on Thursday signed onto an amicus brief in support of the Texas lawsuit aimed at overturning the election results in four swing states, Georgia, Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin, that handed Democrat Joe Biden the White House. This brief presents our concern as members of Congress shared by untold millions of their constituents that the unconstitutional irregularities involved in the 2020 presidential election cast doubt upon its outcome and the integrity of the American system of elections states the brief from GOP lawmakers. So what they're doing here is admitting that they're against democracy, but this is really Orwellian because while they attack democracy, while they call for the result of a democratic election to be overturned, they're claiming, no, 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 we're the ones who actually are the true proponents of democracy. We're the ones who support democracy. That's why we're calling on democracy to be overturned. And the sad thing is that the base believes this, and perhaps a lot of these Republicans are signing on to this amicus brief because they're afraid of what the base thinks. And let's face it now, we are dealing with a political party and their base who is delusional. Like, we are living through George Orwell's America, but for me to say that, they'd say, no, 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 you're the one who's putting us in George Orwell's America because you're the ones who stole democracy. Like, it's a situation that I don't know how this is sustainable. And a new report from the Washington Post found that only 27 Republicans acknowledge the basic reality that Joe Biden won. Two congressional Republicans actually think that Trump is the winner. 220 congressional Republicans overall, they won't even say who won. So that's 88% of congressional Republicans. I mean, how do you go forward? How do you work with folks like this? who deny basic reality, basic facts, who think the opposite of what happened is the real reality. 
it's just it's a really sad situation like i think a lot of liberals don't understand how much work there is to be done they don't get it biden is not up to the task biden is not going to be able to repair these divides like he says by just you know reaching out to republicans and creating some government entity of some sort that reaches out to conservatives that's not going to cut it the only thing that will break the temperature here or break the fever i should say and stop this delusions is if people are no longer susceptible to said radicalization they have to have their material conditions met and what we're looking at here is societal collapse we're facing an eviction crisis and we don't even know if we're going to see a second round of stimulus checks we don't even know so as people work longer hours for lower wages get more and more desperate this delusion will continue and the republican party is not going to change once trump is out trump may not have been successful at stealing this election but if republicans are now openly embracing authoritarianism and they know they can say anything deny reality outright and their base will still believe them we are in for a really really difficult couple of decades if this is the path that we're headed on because we have the democratic party who functionally is the moderate republican party now uh, or the republican party of the 2000s and we have a republican party that is just they're in another dimension mentally. They're they're nowhere to be found. So how are we supposed to come together with approximately 50% of a country who denies objective reality? Like, what do you do in that situation? I don't think there's a right answer to that. But what's important is that we grapple with this fact. Because this isn't going to go away with Donald Trump. This delusion, this authoritarianism, and an embrace of anti-democratic behavior this is going to be with us for quite some time. And just because Trump didn't steal the election this time doesn't mean that Republicans in the future won't be successful at killing democracy. We already are seeing them just brazenly say, I want to overturn the result of our democratic elections. That's a really bad sign. Like, I don't think people fully understand how bad of a sign this is for the long-term health of our democracy. Like, we are in the end stage of our democracy, unless we can somehow reverse this, but, you know, we need a miracle.